you're back and we're going to finish up row restriction as it pertains to date time data types so we're going to cover how to deal with time right now the time segment since we don't have any interesting time data in the patient account we're going to open up the findings table and grab the first thousand rows and if we look we've got uh, a couple date time fields, three to be precise, and they have the time facet filled out. Uh, I want to call your attention to a couple things. As we're looking at the data, these clearly look to be date time fields, but if we go over to the schema, we'll see the data create timestamp is actually a 26 character field and the service create timestamp is also a character field length of 26. The finding timestamp is our only true date time field of these three. So what's up with that anyway? Well as it as it turns out the date the two timestamps actually this database was imported from another system whose date time field went out to microseconds. The timestamp actually, the date time field time portion actually is granular to microseconds, whereas in MySQL it's only granular to milliseconds. And so instead of losing data precision in the conversion, the data was actually imported and transformed from a date timestamp from the source system into a character field so that the data could be fully preserved. And that's uh, just a little aside that has some relevance for us. All right, now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to use the time function. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put, we're going to wrap inside our time function the finding timestamp. And we're going to ask for, and we're going to do a range again. And I want to see everything where the timestamp is equal to 1445. So we'll say greater than 1444 and less than 1446 and let's run that and you can see we get back everything where the timestamp is equal to 1445. And this works, the time function works exactly the same as the date function we just covered. It's only dealing with, it, just that it's dealing with the time facet of the date time field. And so we can apply it up above. And you can see what we what we get back. Now, I want to do a couple things. I'm going to return back to the uh, select star. I want to do something. Let's uh, say, for example, you space out and you forget to add the time function. And let's just run this as is. If you notice we get nothing back, bubkiss, nothing comes back. And so I wanted to do this on purpose because it raises a very important point that is above probably everything that I teach you. To me, this is one of the foundational points. 
When you write a query with row restriction and you get zero rows back, you always need to step back and ask yourself, am I getting zero rows back? Because based on what I'm asking for, there are no rows in the database that match that criteria, or am I getting zero rows back because I've done something wrong in my query? And I can't stress how mission critical it is that you're able to answer that question. As, as you're using SQL to query the database, you're doing it to do analysis. You may be doing it to service an application, to roll up data for some sort of business intelligence operation, whatever, whatever the case may be. But the bottom line is you're doing something against the data that people are going to make decisions on, that's going to have an impact on on decisions that are made within your enterprise. And so it's, it's very important that you understand when you get nothing back that you really need to unequivocally understand, am I getting nothing back because there's nothing to get back? Or have I done something wrong in my query? And uh, I, I just can't stress that enough. OK, we'll add the. Uh, time functions back in. And before I send you off to your exercise, there's one, there's actually a couple other things I want to show you. Some quirky things that with, with my SQL regarding the subject that we've been talking about. Now, what do you suppose is going to happen if I apply the time function, which is a function that's meant for either the time data type or the date time or the timestamp data type? What do you think is going to happen if I take a character field, this data create timestamp, and apply it? Well, if you've worked with other SQL Server versions, your answer should be, well, you're probably going to get an error that you're matching a function to an inappropriate data type. Well, let's give that a try and, and see what happens. Hmm. Hmm. It would appear that uh, the data create timestamp, that the time function is working against a column which for all practical purposes does contain a date and time field. Date and time date I should say. But it's working against it. Now I don't want you to get the idea that this is normal behavior in SQL because it absolutely is not one of the quirks with MySQL. I also want to show you another quirk based on the last exercise we did. Uh, as you saw earlier, I took the time function off and I got nothing back. Well, let's go back to our last query and let's do the same thing by taking the date function off and running our query. Hmm, that's another big hmm. Uh, that's That too is not normal, typical ANSI SQL behavior. This is also a quirk of MySQL that it allows you to do this. And it is my wholesome recommendation that you do not do business that way. That you explicitly put the date and timestamp on. Now, in a situation like this, where it actually will apply the time function to a non-date time field, which is indeed a date time field, while that is a quirky thing, it's something you can certainly take advantage of, especially in the situation where data has been imported or migrated or synchronized from, a, from another source system. And it's had to be preserved by casting it into a character field because the precision is is greater so so there you go okay you now have enough information and we've concluded the lesson on working with date and time you've done the lesson on nulls and you're ready to head off and
do your next set of exercises. I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.